let us begin today's summer story with a word of prayer. Oh God, may the words of my mouth, the tales from history, and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable to you, O oh God, who is our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There once was a kingdom, a kingdom that was wise and just and fair, led by a king who was wise and just and fair. This kingdom had known many centuries of peace. But what was most notable about this kingdom was in the very center of the center city was the most magnificent palace you have ever seen. Rich, deep marble, grays and whites and blacks, and marble pillars glistening brighter than you could imagine. So many rooms that some say some of the king's servants would wander counting room by room and then get so lost and mixed up they never counted all the rooms in this palace. In this palace were these magnificent paintings telling the history of the kingdom. It is most notable about this particular palace because it is no more. You see, one day this just and fair king was out with his family on festival day and all the people of the town went out to the hillside and celebrated the joy of the festival. And on this particular festival day, the most unimaginable tragedy happened. There was an earthquake. The folks on the hillside felt it rumble. And not knowing exactly the effects of this earthquake, they all ran back into town. And praise be to God, most all of their homes were fine and standing, but to their dismay, to their amazement, in the center of town, what they found is that this beautiful palace, beyond imagination in beauty, had crumbled in the earth, had fallen to the ground, and the very ground had swallowed it up. There was not one marble stone standing on marble stone. In fact, the only thing the townspeople found was a pile of earth and dust. Their beautiful palace that they had been so proud of for so long that no one knew who had built was now gone forever. This put the king into deep depression. You can imagine how tragic this would be. He retreated to a small, very humble house on the edge of town. And he aged very, very quickly. When the king died, his daughter, who had been a very young princess at the time of the tragedy, took the crown as queen. And even though she had not really known the palace, because she had been a little girl and had been confined to the nursery in just a few rooms, she nonetheless mourned the loss, for the entire land had lost what was clearly its identity. It was now a kingdom without a palace. She too reigned justly and well and equitably, but anyone who came to her humble court saw in her eyes a deep, deep sadness. The only thing that gave this kingdom some 
brilliant spark of hope, small while it was, was a legend. A legend that told that the reason why no one knew why the palace when the palace had been built, or how it had been built, or by whom it was built, because it had been built magically in a day. And it had been built through music. That there was a day when a magician, a magician, <laughs> a musician, sometimes magicians, we wonder how that happens, a musician, had created the most exquisite piece of music that this beautiful palace had been formed on the spot in a day's time. And the legend was that if ever the palace were to fall, all it would take would be another most magnificent piece of music that would once again raise the palace. The young queen could not wrap her heart around such a legend. It was fable in her mind. It was too much to imagine. So she did not even believe the thought. And most of the townspeople did not believe the legend also, except, of course, musicians, who are eternal optimists and always hopeful. And, not ours of course, a little bit of an ego. Because you see, it was the idea that the one musician who would create this piece of music to raise the palace would become the most famous musician of all and would gain glory if not gold by the queen when she would see the new palace risen. So musician after musician after musician would come to the center of town on the site of the old palace. And, and, and they would have lyres and create music. They would, they would be flutists, flautists, and pipe players, guitarists and singers, and they would come one by one waiting till no one else was creating music, and then they would present to the glory of the queen their music. But one by one, it failed. No one created the music that would raise the palace. In this town, there were some young children, one most notable child named Agathon. Agathon was known to be a musician from his very young days. And he was a musician on the lyre and would create beautiful music of his own making. As a matter of fact, some of those very great musicians who had gone to the center of town were his teachers. And they noted that he was, in fact, a wonderful musician. One day he created a very special piece. He found, found it deep inside his soul. And as he played it, the thought occurred to him, perhaps this is the piece of music that will raise the palace. But he knew he was just a young boy and no one would let him play. So he went out to find other musicians who would play his song. And one after another, he would approach them and say, here is my beautiful song. Do you think this is the one that will raise the palace? But each musician, whether they had become so jaded by their many attempts or because they did not want to do someone else's song and therefore have to share the glory, discouraged Agathon. Well, would you not know that another young student of music, Philema, heard Agathon one day out in his backyard. As Agathon played this beautiful music, Philema was mesmerized by it. And, and she grabbed her flute and without him knowing began to 
play, but she did not know the notes for there were no written notes. And, and she, in fact, actually played the wrong notes. Or were they wrong notes? She found them deep in her soul, and she knew they were not the melody that Agathon was playing on the lyre, but they were lower and then higher, but they felt like they fit perfectly. Well, this is a very strange thing because they did not know two people who would play music together. But Agathon, of course, heard the flute from around the corner and rushed around and said, Philema, I did not know you knew my song. And she said, I don't. But it sounded so beautiful together. So they played again and again. And, and they thought to themselves, well, maybe then this is the secret, that you must have more than one musician play. So they went back to the musicians and they would play their lyre and their flute. But once again, the musicians, for whatever reason, sadness of their heart or hardness of their heart, they discouraged Agathon and Philema. And they became discouraged. But walking back to their home, they decided since this song would not be ever offered to raise the palace, that they would play it one last time on the way home. Well, as they played on the way home, they heard the voice of an angel. What surely must have been the voice of an angel. And then as they crossed the street, they saw a crippled boy who had legs but clearly did not have use of them with his two canes next to him, and he was singing. It was this boy singing their song. He wasn't singing the same notes that Agathon was playing. He wasn't singing the same notes that Philema was playing. But again, it fit so perfectly that it must have been inspired. They learned his name was Daniel. So with renewed spirit and a renewed sense of purpose, Agathon and Philema and Daniel, with their help of course, decided to boldly go to the center of town, the pile of dirt that had been the pain of generations, and offer perhaps their gifts. Agathon began, and nothing happened. Philema began, and nothing happened. And Daniel began, and nothing happened. But rather than be discouraged, the music was so beautiful, they kept on because they realized that maybe music was sometimes meant just for music's sake. But before long, folks in the town, particularly the musicians, began hearing this most amazing music. And they would grab their, their pipes or, or their guitars or, or their pipes or their, 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 their uh, flutes or their lyres or, or their voices. And one by one, they came to the center of town. And while no one had seen this music, no one had heard this music before, they began to join in, finding a niche apart sometimes with one of the musicians, and sometimes in tandem with. And before you know it, every musician of that town was gathered in a great circle around this pile of dust and dirt. And this most amazing piece of music lifted to heaven. It was so loud that the queen heard it from her bed. She had been crying that morning, but she stopped and slowly began walking towards the center of town. Well, the musicians were so caught up in what was going on that none of them had even thought to look in the center of the town. Nothing was happening, by the way. But they ended. They ended on the most amazing cacophony of harmony 
than any one of them had ever not just known but imagined. And they held on to that note as long as they could. And when it ended, the ground beneath them began to shake. And before their very eyes, block by block, column by column, slate by slate, painting by painting, the most wondrous palace, not the one that had been there before, but a brand new palace, even greater, even larger than ever before. And as the last stone fell into place, the last gilded angel fell into place, the queen arrived at the doorstep and turned to the musicians and said, this is the magic. We must sing and play together. May we too build our own castles as wonderful individuals, but together as amazing harmony. May it be so. Amen. Amen.